Whoa, I screwed something up. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to Scribbles with Chris Reiniak. Oh, I gotta turn my volume down. I am a mess. I'm a bachelor tonight because my girlfriend is in Florida and I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where the camera is. I don't know where the air horn is. I don't know anything. Welcome, Critter Crew. Um, it's Thursday, which can only mean one thing. It's kaiju time! Hopefully, uh, you guys are ready. There's a monster going at you. Um, because that's all I got on deck. <laughs> that's all I know how to do today. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, Old Man Chris all alone tonight. Hello to the entire Critter crew. Uh, we are here for episode number 47. We are inching closer and closer to, uh, episode 50. Hopefully I can just, uh, be consistent and not cancel live streams, but I don't know what I'm gonna do next week. We'll have to figure that out because I'm gonna be in uh, gonna be in Florida, so uh, I'm leaving on Monday and coming back on Friday. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. Maybe I'll do a super quick one or something. Maybe, maybe. I'm gonna be on vacation. Can't do one on Monday. Never mind. Anyway, cheers, guys. Uh, happy Thursday. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, it's kaiju time, so I'm going to draw a kaiju. Take a week off and have a proper vacation? That sounds awesome. Maybe I'll just do that. Thanks, Kesho. Done. Oh, and Alex Party is hosting. Thanks so much, Alex. Um, all right, I'm just going to get into this one. i got to move my, uh, my keyboard there so I can see what I'm doing here. This guy's a little weird. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna warn you. Um, it's not a Disney vacation per se. Uh, we are we're we're visiting family down there, but we are um, we are going to go to Disney for one day. So that's enough. Uh, I've been to Disney many, many, many times um, because I used to live down there. And uh, I've seen most of the stuff down there, but I haven't seen the new stuff at the Animal Kingdom, so I'm really looking forward to seeing that. So, oh, it's D'Artagnan. Welcome, D'Artagnan. Um, yeah, I haven't seen the new stuff at the, like, the Avatar stuff, which, you know, say what you will about the movie, which I've said many things about the movie. Um... It seems like a really good movie franchise for a theme park, if you know what I mean. Uh, like, I kind of thought the same thing about the Cars Land at uh, California Adventure. Like, I'm not a big fan of the Cars franchise, but boy, does it make for a fun uh, theme park uh, theme. Is what working? What are you waiting for? Somebody, somebody say something to Teresa. Yeah, tell her hit refresh. Everybody else can see. Teresa's drunk already. I mean, still drunk as always. <laughs> no. Well, I'm glad you can see the chat now, D'Artagnan. Yeah, you guys are going to have to keep me com company. I've been all by myself all day. Um, I'm waiting to see if Amanda's actually going to pop in from Florida. I don't know if she will or not. Uh, she's probably sitting there um, with her whole family laughing at me right now, watching me on Twitch. Like, look at this doofus. This is what I have to put up with two times a week, every week. <laughs> oh no, Twitch has been bad today. I did start, um, I did start Monster Hunter today. So this is what happens when Amanda leaves. Um, I started it and I swear I've been playing, hello Mr. Creep. Uh, I have been playing for in maybe 45 minutes and nothing has happened yet. It's been like 
cutscenes and intros, and I had to uh, I had to design my character and my palico, which is my my little cat companion. So I don't know if I'm entirely happy with my character design, but um, I was getting really uh, impatient with. Uh, um, I was getting impatient with the amount of time it was taking. Oh, I got Mike Patton hair, huh? That's not such a bad thing. He's a handsome man. He just turned 50 years old, which I kind of can't believe. Submenus, I haven't gotten into that yet. I do believe there is, there's, I've, I've just started, like, choosing weapons. And boy, is it granular. So, um... Once I can, like, get over that garbage, I'm sure it'll be fine, but it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's basically like learning a new interface for a, uh, for a, um, like a program, like, it's like, it's like learning ZBrush, except there's monsters, well, wait, wait, there's monsters in ZBrush too, never mind. But it's, it's really pretty. Um, the monsters, yeah, like Hannah's saying, uh, the monsters are really awesome looking. That's, that's actually the, the biggest reason why I wanted to play it, was just so I could, I could, you know, Google the monsters. Oh, that's all, that's good to hear. Yeah, it's, it's my first Monster, Monster Hunter 2. I've, I've heard great things over the years from the, my friends who play it over, uh, mobile, or, uh, you know, a DS. And they've been trying to get me into it, but and it's funny they're the same people who are trying to get me into it, but they, but they they talk garbage about Horizon Zero Dawn, but they literally, um, they literally started the game with a Horizon Zero Dawn like skin, so you can actually play as Aloy, which is really funny. So it's like, oh, so the creators of the game acknowledged her. I didn't get a haircut. This is this is my actual hair. So my hair is just long and curly. It's just that's just the way it is normally. It's just back. I'm trying to look like a gangster. Oh, Uncle Steve, we were talking about Monster Hunter and so far I haven't gotten into it, but it seems good. I mean like the camera controls are good. Uh the the navigation's good, but there's a lot of menus and stuff I gotta remember. I gotta remember to sharpen my blade while I'm playing. So, hello, Jake. Actually, Jake uh, messaged me on Twitter today, or mentioned me on Twitter today, and part of the reason why I got Monster Hunter is because of what you told me on Twitter, and it's that the spring release for Red Dead Redemption 2 which we've talked about many times here, uh, got pushed back to October. So I think I angrily bought Monster Hunter today because I was just so ticked off by it. <laughs> I wasn't really mad. I was just like, you know what? You know what? If I'm going to wait, I might as well. Oh, it makes a huge difference. Okay. I'll have to remember that. I'm, I'm pretty bad at, like, multitasking in games, so I'm going to have to learn. Wait. Hey, Chris, I'm listening to Jason Isbell, who's married to a woman named Amanda while sitting at home waiting for my girlfriend to get off work, who's named Amanda. Well, <laughs> that's pretty crazy, Ed. My girlfriend is also named Amanda, and she's texting me right now, but her name is Mandy, so... <laughs> um that's just that's a whole lot of amanda oh there's amanda hello mandy hi 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 i miss you so amanda i have to tell you something on the way home after dropping you off at the airport uh i stopped by becker's donuts at 6.30 in the morning. They are open, by the way. And, and Punchki Day is coming up. Uh, boy, is it weird at 6.30 in the morning. The people that are in there are very strange. So, I just want to tell you that. If you ever want to... Uh, it's sort of like the L.A. Donut Shop experiences. So, there you go. How's Florida? 
This is Amanda Louise Bate is my girlfriend, if you guys don't know. She's in Florida right now. Aw, barf. I'm glad you missed me. But you have a cat to play with down there. <laughs> yeah, Poonchki Day. It's coming. Oh, we were getting schmoopy on Twitter, too. Yeah, it's been bad today. I think it's because we're apart. <laughs> Poonchki is P-A-C-Z-K-I. That's how you spell Poonchki. It's true. How's your family, Amanda? Are they good? Are they watching along with you? No, don't say it looks like something, Jake. Now I'm going to have to erase the whole thing. Well, Admiral Akbar looks like a squid. And this looks like an octopus. So it, I guess that's... I guess that works. <laughs> Florida is nice and warm and super brown. Yeah, because it, it got cold down there. They got to freeze, so everything everything got fried. Well, the opposite of fried. Freeze-dried. <laughs> Thanks, Jake. My feelings feel much better now. It'll look less like Admiral Akbar when I'm done. Oh, the grass is dormant. That's weird. The grass down there is really weird. I hate the, I, it. They call it St. Augustine grass, or they call it bluegrass, depending on what they use. But, um, but it's crabgrass. It's just crabgrass. I don't care what they tell you. Oh, so <laughs> her parents' cat is named Edelweiss, and it has the least cat-like um, uh, habits that I've ever seen. She, she's real weird. Oh yeah, post post photos of Edelweiss doing weird things. Post some some videos on Instagram with the vegetable brush that we've heard so much about. Apparently, the cat loves a vegetable brush. Don't know why. Oh, you know what? While Amanda's here, we can do this. <laughs> She, you can't see her, her, but there you go. Oh, no. Teresa, I can see your chats. Oh, so the cat loves being lint rolled, too. What a weird cat. So, uh, Amanda, I made my, my palico in Monster Hunter, which, like, took me 20 minutes to do. I'll have to take a picture of him for you. He's very cute. You and, and Chloe will be, uh... We'll be very happy. <laughs> That's awesome. It's like the it's like the can opener. I really do wish I could see the amount of people that are watching. It makes me crazy I can't see it anymore. Oh, Derek's back. Hello, Derek. Well, Derek's back today for... It's Kaiju time! Oh, thank you for the, thank you for the update, guys. If it gets above 40, just let me know. <laughs> I'm just curious. It's nice that we keep it small, but I would like this thing to to uh to grow i don't want it to get like out of hand but it'd be nice if it grew a little more thank you azeli cat azeli cat posted a very good photo of um of slumber guppy today on instagram actually i'm just gonna find it if you don't mind oh also so i've been running my uh, my tap tap fish in the background over here so there it is. Look at look. I got a whale shark and a 
narwhal, and there's a thresher shark in there somewhere, and there's a dolphin, and a couple of jellyfish. Oh, and my favorite fish in the whole wide world is in there. Where is he at? Let's see if I can... No, that's not the one I want. That's not the one I want. It's the... I can't believe I'm making you watch this. I'm going to find it. I saw it a second ago. You know, forget it. I'm done. It's like the slowest fish, too. Forget it. Anyway, I got a coelacanth. He's right down there. <laughs> okay, bye, Amanda. Bye. I'll see you soon. Um... Yeah, Azeli Cat uh, uh, made a. If you're not following Azeli Cat on Instagram, she goes by she he. Sorry, I think it's a she. Maybe wrong. Um, is it just Funko Pop? Is that what it is? Here we go. Look at that great photo. Isn't that awesome? Garden apes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Azelly Cat. I I assumed just by the name, but I, w I didn't want to be insensitive. Yeah, you gotta be careful with the slumber guppies because their their ears are very delicate. That if that that Jenga pile fell down, those and those antennas would be gone. Oh, hi, Mom. Hi, Mom Spade. And bye. Okay, now that Amanda's gone, we can talk about a big problem with her. Okay, I don't know if if anybody is following me on. Yes, we will talk later. Uh, if anybody is following me on Patreon, um, I got rid of my two top tiers, and <laughs> what was supposed to happen was uh, you weren't supposed to be charged, um, or at least I assumed that that was what was supposed to happen, and but you were charged. But never fear, you're going to get a refund. So uh, it's totally possible. I'm talking to the Patreon people right now. Sit tight. I'll give you guys the, uh, the instructions. You may or may not need to do something. But uh, I'm f currently fixing what I broke. Uh, and we'll get, it, we'll get it all fixed up. You'll, you'll get a refund for this month. So there you go. Hello, CMH. Oh, it was already refunded. Oh, maybe they fixed it. That is good to know. Thank you, thank you, D'Artagnan. Oh, you showed it as a credit. Okay. Uh, I'll follow up with them. They must have done it. They must have done something. Uh, Ethan, if you could. Uh, I think Amanda's had the same problem, but I think because she, she's in Florida, we, we'll be. If anything got messed up, we got all this whole month to figure it out. So you might just get a free month. Um. Oh no, being bat. Okay, Ethan, I'm gonna I'm gonna figure it out. I I'm aware of the problem, um, but don't worry. I'm I am aware of the problem, and you will be getting a refund. So, um, being bat. I'm not really sure why. Changed you yesterday. Fifty tiers. Which tier did you change it to? One of the lower tiers. Did you edit your pledge? <laughs> you do know where I live. I can pay in tacos. Um, yeah, and I apologize for how much of a pain this is, if, if it's a pain for anybody. Um, I was really trying to do it, you know, the path of least resistance, but um, 
you know, it's a system, and systems are easily messed with, so I apologize if I, if I inconvenienced anybody, but we're going to get it fixed. It's a little bit of a debacle, but the, pe the, the people at Patreon are really great, so uh, um, if anything is weird, just send me an email or a text or... or a, anything just message me somehow uh but wait i'm gonna put up a post and tell you what you gotta do and we'll figure it out so um no worries i'm just holding on to some money for you right now you'll get it back i wish that like actual cash came to me and i could sign it for you and send it back to you see i told you this guy was gonna be real weird i went super weird tonight but can't do all fat, chubby kaiju standing on two legs, so. Changed from the top tier to the $2 tier, and it will be charged for February. It says I'm not a patron. Which, uh, okay. Yeah, it'll probably work out. So as long as you contacted them, it's all good. Their, their customer service is really usually super on top of it. So, um, and they're aware that there are issues happening right now. Um, yeah, we'll get, we'll get it all worked out. So, uh, okay, I'm going to talk about some stuff that's been happening. So I've talked about the Tannis podcast before on this, uh, on this live stream, um, I'm a big fan of it, and we've, we've been waiting for season four to come out, and I just found out that season four is happening, I think, February 28th, I want to say. Um, it's February, it's late February at some point, but if you haven't started listening to it, and you want something to listen to, and you like audiobooks, it's a narrative. It's an interesting, it's an interesting uh, format, because they're using uh, the podcast as a medium to tell the story. It's not just, um, it's not just the format. It's also, they're acknowledging that it is a podcast. So it's almost like, like a journalistic thing that's happening. So, so they'll, they'll reference the podcast. Um, and I find that to be really interesting because it makes it feel a little more real. Like it makes it feel like you're listening to, you know, something that's happening in real life, but it's all, it's all fiction. Um, but the same group that puts out Tannis also puts out um, put out one called Rabbits, which I think that that I thought it was wrapped up, but I heard that they're actually making new episodes. Um, that one's really interesting too. Um, and they have a third one called uh, the Black Tapes, which is um, like the same sort of format. They're using like the podcast as a medium. Like they're acknowledging that they're they have a new podcast, and the podcast is a person interviewing people who have strange jobs, and they find this person who's like a paranormal investigator, which everybody knows how much I don't believe in that stuff. Um, let me take that back. I'm open to uh, to anything, you know. Show me some proof, and I'll uh, I'll be like, sweet. I've always wanted ghosts to exist. I've had a lot of weird experiences, and I just still don't believe in them. But anyway, um, it's a great podcast. Some spooky stuff has happened already. Uh, so if you're looking for something to listen to, listen to the Black Tapes podcast. So, are we still live? Uh, still streaming. Okay, we're still live. Everybody's dead. Everybody's doing something else. What did everybody have for dinner? See, I beat you to it. What did everybody have for dinner? I want to hear it. Come on. I won't tell you until you tell me. Oh, it's fine, Ethan. I, I'm, I'm flattered that you're, you, you listen to me while you're working. Turkey chili. Pizza. Both good things so far. 
batting a thousand. I think that's good. I think that's a good number in baseball. I don't know. Tuna roll sounds good. Roasted chicken salad also sounds good. A two for pizza, awesome. Kimchi stew. Oh, you win so far. For most interesting. Still waiting. Five guy five guys burgers and fries. That seems to be like a, a good uh a, a big thing around here, doesn't it, Jake? We do it at least once a month and then I always smell like that place. They have good burgers, but you can't like escape this the smell of that place. Like wear clothes that you don't mind uh sorry I'm adjusting the camera. Smelling like burgers. Um so, I had, so our local grocery store actually has a really, really good seafood section, which means um, they, and they have a tiny, uh, they have a sushi chef in there, actually, and you know, it's not like your run-of-the-mill grocery store sushi, like, it's actually really good. They had, um, they had tuna and, um, and uh, salmon nigiri rolls uh sushi rolls so that's what i had um so yeah i lived it up that's bachelor style i ate sushi for myself um uh, let's see uh chicken noodle soup and ritz crackers with peanut butter Teresa, i'm i'm convinced that you're perpetually nine years old which is fine hearing you swear as much as you did on the podcast the other day was really really unsettling <laughs> Bachelor style. Ugh. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually kind of nervous because it's supposed to snow. Get Well, it's, it's supposed to get down to 10 degrees here tonight. Amanda's where it's 70 degrees currently. And then uh, it's supposed to snow over the weekend. And I'm supposed to leave on Monday. So I'm really hoping that it doesn't affect my flight. What was making Teresa swear? Uh, Gary Ham was prompting her to say uh, bad words. She wasn't swearing because she was angry. You know, I did wear sweatpants all day. Actually, we usually wear sweatpants all day when we're working in the studio. Because why not? I've been considering getting some overalls for the basement. For when I work, in, work down there. Ooh, a McDonald's apple pie. Are they still the same as they used to be? Like, are they as crispy on the outside, or do they, like, do they change them up? I haven't had one in probably 20 years. <laughs> Bachelor Kaiju does not need to do his hair. But see, I've been doing this lately. I've just been, like, like my hair is crazy curly, and I've just been kind of, like, like just letting it do its thing, which I've never done before. So I'm just gonna let it, I might get the sides cut tomorrow, so. <laughs> Derek, that's awesome. <laughs> You've eaten two more since. It's okay, Teresa, it's very endearing. Do we have a set work schedule? Do you work on weekends or stick to a normal work week or it just depends? That's actually a really, really good question, Jake. Um, thank you for hosting, Hannah. Um, so it depends on the day. Like sometimes I do my drawings at night and sometimes I do them in the morning. If I do them in the morning, I get up early and do them in the morning. Um, and then I, we have breakfast and then we get into the work day and it kind of depends on like what's going on sometimes we have meetings and um sometimes there's just other life stuff happening um but we try to keep a set schedule and we try to actually stop working after dinner um but usually we'll we'll come back into the studio for like an hour and that's like when i'll do my drawings usually so um but when the kids are here, we try not to work a lot. Um, we try to spend a lot of time with them and, and go out and do stuff on the weekends and 
you know, try to live like normal people do. So, I guess that answers the question. We usually watch, like, lately we've been watching shows, like, while we eat dinner. Because we don't want to stay up super late. So, kill two birds with one stone. We're sitting still anyway. We have that giant fancy TV to watch things on now, so. We've been watching The Punisher. I wonder if it's just lagging for everybody tonight. But when we have when we have uh, you know sales and and you know extenuating circumstances, we'll work on the weekends. We'll just work when we have to. Question: If the minifigures have a hole in the bottom, does that mean they're hand painted? Uh, yes, usually. Why are you asking? So, uh, I think there's only, let me see if I can find one. Hold on. So I'll show you these guys. So, um, this is like what a typical hand painted one is like, um, sans the scarf. So what she's talking about is there's a hole in the bottom. Um, this, this is also a hand painted one. So, uh, this one has a hole in the bottom too. And the reason why there's a hole there is because we put um, we put dowel rods in the bottom, so sticks go inside the bottom it, that we can hold on to while we paint them. So. Yeah, having a, a schedule, uh, treating it like it's a job is, is pretty important. Like, there's some days where, where when we're working super hard, um, we'll be bad about, like, taking showers and stuff. Like, like we'll just get right to work and, you know, take a shower at 2 p.m. But um, I find it's better to just get up, treat it like you're going to your job and, and, and do that. Otherwise, you can get really distracted really easily. Um and I've always wanted to have a, um, and we, we've talked about this before, have a, a workplace outside of the home to go to, but the overhead is just too high. There's really no, there's like no justifying it other than, well, we did it because we wanted to. No, they're not cast that way. So, uh... So like a, a typical one, like this guy, so smidgen, that's how they look. Um, if they have a hole in the bottom, it means that we drilled the hole and it was specifically for the purpose of painting. We don't drill holes in ones that uh, that aren't being painted. Somebody just said, as Ellie Kett said, this is looking like one of the cute, cutest pu occupants I've ever seen. Well, thank you. The eye is a little wonky, but I can fix it. It's bothering me a lot. I think I'm just going to make the whole pupil bigger. Recall implementation of one, one kick ass work week. <laughs> she coined a cooler sounding name, but I don't recall it. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we, we definitely, what Derek was saying is true. We, we definitely try to squeeze in one day a week where we just like we really hit it hard um and you know this is after years and years of me putting in 16 hour days you know i'd work eight hours at my job and then i come home and work for eight hours and that was really not something i wanted to continue so now that i don't have to do that i don't want to do that anymore like clearly we could be doing more clearly but I don't know. We're trying to. We're trying. We're really trying to get that like, like, balance of like. I want to live my life also, and you know, making art is fun. It's a it's a fun job, but it is a job sometimes. Actually, it's a job all the time. I'll say that. Um, and just like any job, even if you love what you do, if anybody says, 
uh, uh, if you love what you do, you won't work a day in your life. That's a, a BS platitude that's just something that looks good on a poster. And it's made to make you feel better. If you love what you do, sometimes you're going to be tired. Like, it's just, it's just going to happen. Um, like, just, let's just be realistic about it. It's like people who have kids that never say anything bad about kids. Like, there's been days where you have kids where you're just like, like, I'd really like to put them out on the curb and put a sign that says for sale or free to a good home. Like, any parent who's realistic has said that, you know, and they love their kids. Like... I don't know. I, mean, I just, I just don't like that. It's un, it's unrealistic to think that way. Like when you work really hard, sometimes you just want to take a break, or you just, you're not feeling it that day, or just like anybody else, in any other job, it's work. It takes work. It takes brain power. Sorry, I was getting grumpy there. Um. We've actually been doing a lot of like trying to figure out the logistics of the business. Um, and we had a meeting with a business advisor the other day and uh, that went really well and that gave us some direction. So now we kind of know what we need to do, but like at, at any given time, unless you like you're going through like litigation or something or, or you know, most people don't have to talk to the amount of lawyers that we have to talk to, or you don't have to, you don't have to have a CPA. You can do like QuickBooks, or you can do like TurboTax or whatever. Like it gets really complicated when there's two of us and there's multiple revenue streams and all this stuff. Like I'm an artist. I went to art school. That stuff's really hard to figure out, but we're figuring it out and we're growing and it's going really well. So there you go. Thank you, Derek. I appreciate it. Kesho also. Uh, my secret is my days are all bad. You know, it's funny, Retro Jam, and welcome, by the way, pal. Uh, I always said that my secret is I'm like the Hulk. I'm always hungry. <laughs> so, you know, he's always angry. I'm always hungry. So never ask me if I'm hungry. Yes. Steve knows spreadsheets. Steve is our secret weapon, and we always tell people who own a business that they also need a Steve. They can't have ours. We're using him. Um, but Steve knows spreadsheets. Steve is very, very handy with the numbers. <laughs> Put the kids out on the curb. My, my mom always wanted to, I, she, I don't know if she actually did or not. She always joked that she wanted to make a shirt that said for rent on, for me when I was a baby. Apparently I was a cute baby. I've heard. <laughs> Steve's always like selling the sheets. If you're just joining us, which I know you're not. It's guy you excuse to do that. But uh yeah, I never thought drawing cute critters would make me have to, like, talk to lawyers and stuff, and CPAs, and, and no IP law and all this stuff. So it, it's really interesting what, what happens if you take something far enough. So this critter would live in tide pools, I think. Not to, not to correct you, Hannah. I just, I think, well, which is technically a mud puddle. It's just a, like, receded pool of water. Um, a primordial pool, if you will. But it'd have to be a really big type pool, because it is a kaiju, so this thing is huge. Oh, it's Britain Puppy Cat. Welcome, Brit. Um, when I was a kid, all I ever wanted to do was see a tide pool. Like... I lived, I lived in Michigan, so we didn't have the ocean. Uh, we had lakes, but we don't really have tide pools because there's not really tides in the lakes. Um, and I finally got to see one with Amanda, uh, just north of San Francisco. I can't remember what the name of the, the beach was. Um, but I 
finally got to, we finally got to see one and it was awesome and the whole beach was just covered in tide pools and and now all I want to do is go back so oh welcome Jade oh th and thank you that you love his little baby teeth baby teeth <laughs> everybody keeps asking if I got a haircut no I didn't get a haircut my hair is just slicked back I have really long hair see there, my hair is really long. See, um, my hair is really curly. It just looks like I got a haircut because usually my hair is down like over my face, um, but I'm just like letting my hair do its natural thing. It's funny when I just let it, I get out of the shower and let it dry. I look like David Lynch. Yeah, my hair really is a hot topic tonight. Tide pools are really amazing things. Like, if I just had hours and hours to sit there and look at them. <laughs> I'm not going to substantiate that question, Mr. Creep. <laughs> I think you know the answer to that. I think you are trolling, sir. LOL. When will I get a haircut? Tomorrow. How about that? So the next time you see me, you can say, Did you get a haircut? And I'll lie. And I'll say no. Yeah, Amanda likes it natural too. So I, she has to look at me. So if she says she likes something, it stays that way. The the problem is like, I never knew what to do with my hair. I'm a guy, so I don't like I don't know what to do with this. So I was always trying different things and I think uh, I think I'm gonna stick with this for a while. Oh, it's okay, D'Artagnan, thanks for popping in. Well, I, I always have it poorly lit in this little camera. This camera. This camera right here. It's weird that I'm pointing at my own face. So you won't be able to tell. Okay, I don't know. Some of you might be might be doing it already. Hold on a second. But I want you I want you to do yourselves a favor. And I want you to follow this artist on Instagram. His name's Aaron Horky, and if you don't know of him, now you do. Uh, he works in um, typically pen and ink, and it's worth it to follow him just for his stories because he does close-up versions of what he's working on. And um, I've known of Aaron for a very long time. Like he's he's been in the lowbrow scene for a really long time. Uh, but he is a master technician with a pen. And, and it's one of those things when you watch how he builds structures that um, it's, and I don't, I don't use this like term lightly, but you're, you, you're well aware that you're watching a master at work. Um, and it's super humbling to watch, but it's also amazing. Like it's amazing that his brain is processing these shapes into like really, and in, in all these marks into really precise uh, images. So uh, yeah, it, it's, it's so crazy. And the, the amount of detail um, is just, it's just mind blowing. So, and it's just all done with a pen. So anyway, um, do yourselves a favor if you if you want if you want your mind to be blown slightly, uh, go follow uh, Aaron. Um, I just thought that as I was drawing, like boy, I just draw like a mess. Like there's no rhyme or reason to these things. And then guys like him, you know, they're just like they're not even they're not even somebody to live up to. They're just like well, that guy's on a different a different plane of existence altogether. Uh, and I appreciate it, and it's it's just awesome that human beings like that exist. So, there you go. Hats off to you, Aaron. 
Uh, you're amazing. Of course. Yeah, Aaron. Uh, he actually did a... Um, if you guys know of uh, Ferg and the company Plague, P-L-A-Y-G-E, uh, he did a logo for them. It's like two rats with a, with a P. Actually, I think it might say Plague on it. Um, but he did that, so... <laughs> But I didn't see you nap. You, maybe you should start a, uh, maybe you should start a, another Instagram account just for you napping, and it'll just be stories of you napping. And you can call it Napster. Huh? Huh? Anybody? All right. Um. Which reminds me, uh, Ethan, if you're still here. Guys, it's time for Ethan's joke of the day. Ethan, what do you got for us tonight? Hopefully it's a real groaner. <laughs> Twitch naps. Yeah, there you go. Just Maybe that'll be one of your streams. It'll just be one day a week you just nap. It'll be like an Andy Warhol film. Oh no, I haven't heard this one. It's an unvetted joke. Let's hear it. I'm looking I'm looking forward to this one. Settle in everybody. The joke's about to happen. <laughs> what do you call an alligator in a vest? Again, the question was, what do you call an alligator in a vest? An investigator. Wow, that was fantastic, Ethan. Well done. <laughs> oh, that was, that was great. So my question is, are you like, are you scouring the internet for these? Are you compiling them? Are these ones that you just remember from childhood? Are you shaking your kids down for jokes? Like it, all of the above? Like I want to know. I want to know the process. Are you making them up? Do you have a, a book from the 1950s of children's jokes? Yeah, that's also my kind of joke, too. I'm looking something up. Hold on. Hold on, I gotta do something really quick. This is related, but not related. Uh, Ethan, I'm sending you a text message right now. There you go, do your research. Oh, the hullabaloo. That sounds great. It's, it sounds like, like the jokes in there are like, some are real funny, and then some are just like stupid, stupid 50s jokes. Like they're really pushing. See, I work for a greeting card company, and you know we had all those, all those jokes from like the 60s and stuff on, on file. And boy, are they bad. Like, and, and, and awful and like misogynistic and borderline racist like there's so much weird old stuff from like the the 30s and 40s i all you gotta do is just like look on the internet and you'll find them they're like those were sold in stores 
<laughs> Happy Valentine's Day! <laughs> Deceased, deceased baby jokes. Oh no! See, I had this whole list of jokes about people that were missing limbs and their names, like what their names were. Like a man with no limbs on the wall, his name was Art, and one being pulled behind a boat was named Skip. But I felt that those were very insensitive, because there are people with no limbs. So uh, I've I've shelved those jokes. Hey, even when you get that text, uh, you don't have to watch it now, but when you get a chance, you should watch that video. There's a, a couple particularly really good ones in there. I'm showing my, my sharing my joke resources, but I don't want to share them with the with the the crowd, just in case Ethan finds some good ones in there. I am not familiar with Todd Slater. Don't know who that is. Oh, so, uh, slightly exciting news. I'm looking at those right now. Well, they're all psychedelic. Huh. I've never seen that before, surprisingly. Oh, I think I've seen those owls before. Oh, those are cool. Huh. No, that's great. Now I'm familiar with them. Um, I got a prototype of a figure that I have 3D modeled. And um, it's in two parts. And if you follow me on Patreon, you have seen it or you've seen the 3D model. But I got the prototype uh, in the mail the other day, and it came out great. I have some tooling and um, sanding and filling and stuff to do on it, but I think it's going to be great. It's smaller than I thought it was going to be. Um, but. It has 18 millimeter eyes, which are, I can show you what size 18 millimeter is. Um, did you just drop bits? I couldn't tell. Uh, that's 18 millimeter. So that's the size of the eyes. So that should give you some idea for the scale. Somebody just start following. I totally missed it. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, it's uh, it's exciting. It's it's the first time I've gotten a three D print sent to my house that I I was actually working on the the prototype. So um, or that I, I'm actually tooling the prototype for that. So we'll see how it goes. This is a, somebody else modeled this one. Um, but under a lot of, uh, a lot of art direction for me. So is that figure going to be mass produced? Um, not mass produced. So the plan is that, uh, I'm going to start by making 50 in resin, uh, and see how it goes, see what the interest is in it. And then, um, if we get a lot of interest, uh, whoever started following earlier, thank you so much. Um, uh, if we get a lot of interest in the figure, then I will probably look into other ways of manufacturing it because I don't want to hand paint, you know, editions of 120 of them. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll look and see what the interest is, but like, I want to keep the cost, you know, lower than normal for the re my resin figures, but I don't know if that's going to be possible because it still costs the same amount. And it might actually cost more to have them produced because um, 
thank you, Durr. Durr Threes. Um, everybody welcome. Uh, Durr Threes. Z, Z, Z. Um, but anyway, it, it might cost more because it's two pieces. So. Look at, look at Kesha throwing out the gig posters tonight. I wish offhand I could think of, I, I used to know tons of, of gig poster designers. <laughs> okay, everybody listen to what, listen to what Uncle Steve says. Steve is my, my acting attorney. <laughs> So if you're new here, Uncle Steve is our is our uh, our shipping and fulfillment manager. Uh, I like to call him our uh, our our, uh, our chief operating officer also because he makes sure that we grow and do things the right way. So um, yeah, should I start an art thread on Facebook? If you want to, it's your page, man. Um, it's your group. You're the fan club president. <laughs> I like the suh, dude. I think people like it when when uh, when people share art. So I think it's a perfectly reasonable place to do that. So I'm gonna to try to figure out a way to show off one tiny part. I think I can do it. I might be able to do this. Maybe. Maybe. Are you ready? See that tiny foot? That's a foot. <laughs> That's part of it. So that should give you some scale. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the impromptu Critter Crew fan. It's the closest thing I have to a fan club currently. You're not managing my P.O. box, so... <laughs> Yeah, like I said, it's a little smaller than I thought it was going to be. Um, like, the body is only slightly bigger than Smidgen. Um, it's, yeah, it's only slightly bigger than Smidgen. But the head is pretty sizable, so. Should come out good, though. This will be the first time I've tried to, like, make large editions of uh, of a multiple piece resin piece. Yeah, I mean it fits it fits I can close my hand around it. I have big hands. I can close my hand around the body, but the the head's about the size of a about the size of a lemon. So I've been I've been continuing on ZBrush. I don't have anything to show yet. I'm not going to show anything for a while. Uh, I think I said it in the last stream. Things that are smooth are way harder to 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 model than things that are lumpy and wrinkly and full of details because you can hide all your screw ups. Currently, uh, I have one coat of paint on the uh, the edition, the next edition, which are going to be Kango Rumples. Uh, and those will be coming out next month. 
Um, and also there's an addition of dew drops on the way. So uh, lots of stuff in the works. Lots of stuff in the works. <laughs> Steve, we gotta get you on the uh, we gotta get you on the stream one of these times. Yep, have, have full team Bindlewood on the stream. I had toyed with the idea of having guest artists on the on the stream also because I thought it was fun when the kids were over here and maybe set up set up a way. Um, because I, I do know a few artists, um, and I don't think they would run their own stream, but uh, I know a few artists that would probably be game for that. So I thought once in a while, maybe bring in some guest artists and have like us all draw together. I have one artist in particular who um, uh, who works nearby, and she works full time, but she does really cute. She does a lot of fan art. Uh, and, um, but it's definitely like her own thing and she has her own characters too, but she's really, really fantastic. So let's see about getting her over here. Maybe can I do a split screen? I don't know. Maybe, I mean, I'm doing a split screen right now. I could totally do that. I could just have two cameras pointing. Um, so I just thought it'd be, I thought it'd be more interesting just to, just to kind of like grow a little bit and you know kind of open it up to new people and you know they can bring they can bring their viewers over here too so um like horrible adorables they live really close by uh actually chris from horrible adorables was here twice this past couple weeks uh using some equipment in the resin area um so you know maybe we can get them over here uh jim groman would be great Oh, thank you, McHiz. <laughs> Red Jar of Jam will fly up. You know, maybe we can do it over... I, I know that, you know what, Bill Duran, um, if you guys don't know him, uh, he runs a Twitch channel called Punish, Punished Props. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. Uh, he does a thing where he does like a QA and a with, uh, with another cosplayer or prop builder. And uh, he does that live over Twitch. I don't know exactly how he does it, but maybe that's another thing I can do too. Do a, you know, a split thing. Figure stuff out. We'll try, we'll try some different stuff. Yeah, there you go. Steve, this sounds like a great idea. We need to get you out of the house more anyway. Get you away from those, those germ-laden children. Oh, so I saw a really interesting video um, uh, the other day. Anyway, I think this is a great idea. I'll, I'll try to implement it. I'll see if I can get, see if I can get people over and uh, get Uncle Steve over and get a few guest artists over. I think Jim Groman would be awesome to have on the stream. Um, I think he'd be game for it. Just figure out what night, what days he works. Yes, Jordan does do adorable sketches, hence the name. Um. Anyway, I saw this video and and I didn't. I, I've thought about it a little bit, uh, just because I've been to Japan a few times. But it was a, a video talking about like why, um, does he live on the east or west coast? Uh. Lives in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, why? So in Japan, um, like fifty percent of the population wear, wear or have worn or just typically wear surgical masks, and it's either when they're sick or if they have hay fever or there's a there's a flu going around, and um, it's super super common. Hello Kirby, and it's not unusual there. You know, it's just like, it doesn't even cross my mind when I see people wearing a surgical mask there. It's just something that they do. And it really does, uh, it really does help control the spread of sickness over there. And it's a cultural thing. Like it's a, um, you know, they, they feel like they don't want to put other people out by making them sick. Um, so that's why they do it. Um, 
So, and they talked about like why that's not not something here. Um, and what like why they, people don't wear masks here? And typically, it's because like people freak out if you cover up your face and like like you know the, it makes people uncomfortable and makes them weird. But how stupid? I mean, really, like. If you want, you don't want to get pointed at and laughed at, but you're perfectly fine, like like spreading the flu. So I was like, you know, maybe we should start like, I should start doing my little part to try to implement that in the U.S. somehow, like just with my immediate family and stuff. Like, if you're sick and you come to my house, wear a mask. Or if I'm sick and I gotta go over to your house, wear a mask. Start small, grassroots. Let's let's try to slow down the spread of germs around here i know people aren't going to wash their hands okay steve says if it's a full moon a buzzer flies thrice over your house and there's precisely a 116th of doom in the ground maybe we can get scott radke it's not going to happen scott's not going to come over <laughs> it'd be nice but oh hello kirby i think i maybe said hello to you already um i wear them all the time when i'm working like i have to wear them when i'm sanding and stuff uh so i it doesn't bother me but yeah, we, there's this like weird cultural stigma about like not wear about s surgical masks, and and I think that I think we can do something about this, guys. Like we had this actually in the office that I worked in, we had a no hero policy. So if you were sick, you had to stay home, and it like didn't count against you because people would drop like flies if if they came into our workplace sick. So we just started saying like, if you're sick, don't be a hero, stay home. Um, and it worked. Like, we noticed that the, like, sickness went way down after that. But I know a lot of workplaces can't do that. And, and you know, if you're working hourly, like, that's a problem. We were working on salary, so. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I just think, like, we got to get over ourselves, man. It's like, it's start doing things that are smart. Well, Steve, stop being a baby. There you go. That's my nuts. <laughs> I'm good today, Kirby. Except Amanda's not here. I'm a little, I'm a little lonely without her here. Uh, she is in Florida. She's very far away. Let's see. Oh, see, that's smart, small and round. Oh, and you're also in Japan, so <laughs> nobody cares if you're wearing, if you're wearing it. Um, Let's see, I got the chameleon kaiju drawing yesterday that was left over in the shop, so happy. Oh, nice, thanks, Kirby. Thanks for picking it up. I didn't even realize it was still in there. See, sometimes they get hidden in there, and they, they hang out for a while, and nobody gets them, and then somebody gets a special surprise. <laughs> That's my, uh, my advice sometimes. Maybe you should just stop being a baby. Did I tell you guys that, that uh, I, I, I took the boy out to start driving this past weekend? It's legal. He's got it. Oh, yeah. Amanda told told you. so. Uh, she, I did tell you. I'm going to take him out for some more driving this weekend. And everybody, thanks, Steve. Thank you, Steve, for, for processing all the orders you did. I think you did like 3,000 orders last year. So well done, Steve. Don't burn yourself out. We need you. Yeah, you know what? I, you know what I think I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna write this down. For uh, every stream, I'm gonna pick one artist to share, um, and hopefully expand your horizons. So that'll be something that I'm gonna implement every time. I'll, I'll have an artist to share, and I'll look into uh, guest artist. You'll help me too because we need to see people more. There you go. Oh, good luck with the with the hair dye, Beanie Bat. I hope it all comes out. I mean, not all of it. I hope some of it sticks. <laughs> Have a good night. Have a good weekend. Goodbye. I don't know when I'll see everybody next. But you'll see me on Instagram. I'll try to post lots of Florida stories. So the thing I'm looking forward to most about going back to Florida is catching lizards. But 
the place where her parents live, I don't think they'd all be gone. They, uh, it's like one of those like super, super clean communities where, you know, the landscaping is impeccable, which means they probably spray a lot of insecticide, uh, which keeps the bugs down and in turn keeps the lizards down. But, uh, I'm going to try anyway. I think D'Artagnan just left. <laughs> Man. Kesha, you're a mess. Yeah, there's lots of critters to catch in Florida. I'm debating whether or not I'm going to bring my fishing pole. Uh, I don't think I'm going to. It, it, it's really super small. Um, uh, Steve, I'll send you his email address. Um, it's really super small, but I don't know if I'm going to have time to go fishing, unfortunately, this time. <laughs> That's exactly where we're going, Jake. That's really funny. So if you guys don't know, Jake literally lives in the same city as I do. Um, and uh, apparently, apparently his grandma lives in the same place that Amanda's parents live. So, See, that's awesome. I love lizards. I love the little tiny baby ones. They're so small. They're like bugs. Yeah, it's a very small world. Yeah, what was really crazy is um, there's another artist that goes by uh, Rars, R-A-W-R-Z Toys, uh, or Victoria Rose Puppets. Um, she actually uh, went to the same high school that I went to, and her husband's parents uh, lived on the same island that my parents used to live on. Which is, those are both very small places. And the fact that they, they were, and, and they're far apart, like, it's sort of strange. So anyway, it's a really odd coincidence, but. Yeah, when I found out that we have lizards in Ohio, I was very, very happy. I had no idea. And, and the way I found out was I saw several of them. So that was, a, that was a nice surprise. I also love reptiles. Snakes and turtles. And... Oh, thanks, Groshong GT. Or Groshong T. Everybody welcome Groshong T. Thank you so much. So, uh, Red Jar Jam, when I lived in Florida, I had, a, uh, I had a bag of dirt on my back porch. It was like a plastic bag full of topsoil. And I left it there for a while, and I was like, I was going to use it to pot plants, and I, I never got around to it. And I went to go move it, and the whole inside had turned into an ecosystem because it was open. So all these plants were growing in there, and it was full of, um, it was full of tree frogs. So there was like 20 of them inside this bag. It was like this little tiny world had sprung up inside there. Oh. Dur threes, are you still in, in Ohio? Or are you just from Ohio? Did you move out of Ohio? Oh, thanks so much for, uh, for saying you're gonna follow. I'm, I'll try to make it worth your while. Next week's gonna be a little weird because I'm going out of town, but after that, it'll, we'll, we'll be back on. And uh, if you guys, so because I'm an affiliate and I'm not a partner, uh, my Twitch channel only uh, only ho holds things for like two weeks, but I put them over on the inst on my YouTube channel. So um, just go over to uh, go over to YouTube and uh, you'll see them all archived there. So I have been saving them. Oh, okay, so you're in Orlando. Gotcha. Moved out of Ohio. I was born in Michigan, 
went to school in Florida, uh, came back to Cleveland for an internship, um, moved back down to Florida, moved to Michigan, and then moved back to Ohio. So I've been bouncing around for a, a long time, and I've actually been here for... Uh, let's see, my son is 17, so I've been here for 15 years. Oh, nice. Yeah, we're, we're also, we're just, uh, let's see, we're one, two, three suburbs away, to, uh, three suburbs to the west of Cleveland on the lake. I won't tell you what city. But if you know, if you know the Cleveland area, see, okay, so I, I've been to every single county in Michigan, uh, which there's a lot, um, because there's two two peninsulas, um, and I'm just over it. Like, I think the Detroit area really bothers me, um, just because it's so congested, uh, and it's so flat. Michigan's so flat. There's a lot of beautiful lakes, but it's very flat. There you go. Oh, hello, Spencer. Welcome back. Seems like everybody is doing well. Yeah, it's weird to bounce around. It's funny, like, you know, I, I, uh, I did go to art school. I went to the Ringling School of Art and Design in Sarasota, Florida. Um, I know so many people I went to high school with just, like, graduated high school and went to college and now still live in the same small town. Uh, I don't know any of them anymore, um, but I know they're still there. You know, having, like, as soon as I graduate, I'm like, I'm getting out of here. I want to go check out the world and try some new places. And um, I don't know. I'm a big proponent for that. I think if you can, if you have the means to do it or you can come up with a reason to do it or get somebody else to pay you to, to move for work, I think you should do it. I think you should move around a little bit. See the world. Man, born and raised in Michigan, now living in Ohio and then moving to Georgia. See? Lots of transient people here. I think that's more common than it than it used to be. Uh, I, where I grew up, you know, my, my entire family was within tw a 20 minute drive. Like, like, entire family cousins uncles grandparents everybody there was nobody that like second cousins there was nobody that lived far away and um i think my aunt was the first one to move away and then uh and then i was the weirdo that moved to another state for college and then kind of stayed there let's see Born in Texas, moved to Florida, then back to Texas, then back to Colorado and Texas again, then California. Wow. Yeah, see? People bounce around. So my son was born in Florida, moved to Michigan, uh, and then moved back to, moved to Ohio. And he's lived here, he's gone to school here his whole life. So he was only in Michigan until he was like two, year and a half, two years old. Oh, man, 20 times in the same state, Jade Emerald. Well, see, but if you travel a lot, too, like, we've talked about that, too. Like, it's, you know, we don't want to have, like, a super extravagant home. We want to have a, we want to have a lot of land, but, you know, it's, that's the, the nice thing about, like, where we live here is it's cheap to live here, and it's a good base for us to just live while in between traveling. Oh, yeah, army kids move a lot. Oh, that's pretty cool, Spencer. That's that's interesting. They make you bounce around to different places. That's a good opportunity. Teresa, have a good night. Thanks for not swearing. <laughs> Teresa's a very nice person, guys. She really, really is. One of the nicest. And has has amazing insight on toys, too. 
So go check her out in the Marsham Toy Hour podcast if you haven't listened in. Wow. Born in Germany, spent time in Italy, then came to Texas, now Colorado. That's all, that's all over the place. Man. See, okay, so when I grew up, when I was a when I was a kid, I was born in one city, and then we moved like three cities over, and then uh, we stayed there until I was 19, and I moved away. So that was or 18. Uh, so that like that was my childhood. My my parents didn't want us to like have to change schools or anything, which was which was awesome and i'm doing the same thing with my kids like we've stayed in the same school district it was really important to me especially like after we got divorced um i stayed in the same city so that even if something happened to my ex-wife's house if she had to move or something uh i could still stay here and uh, the kids could still stay in the same school district so i thought that was really really important i don't want to live here uh I don't want to live in this city, but uh, it's fine. Like, it's a very comfortable place to live. Um, safe and cheap. Relatively quiet during the wintertime. Man, 20 years in the same house. Yeah, I think... I'm trying to think how long we were in the other house. I think we were there for, like... My ex-wife is still there, so they've been there for like 15 years. I've been in this house for about five, so I was there for 10. Will you leave once the kids are out of high school? Probably. Uh, I think it all kind of depends. I mean, you know how life can change on a dime. Uh, you know, I've held, I, I have parents who are not going to stay young like they are and I don't know what's going to happen with them and uh you know they they probably don't care they don't care for me to stay here like and Amanda's parents left so and I don't know what my kids are going to do like I, I don't know if they're going to go go away to college or um not sure what they're going to do yet so everything's kind of up in the air um and the kids know that like I'm not I'm not going to abandon them, and I'm also, uh, I'm also not the type of parent that's, like, going to make them feel guilty if they can't come visit me. Like, if they're off living their life and life gets busy, uh, I'm not going to be like, you didn't come for Christmas. You forgot my birthday. Like, hey, you got stuff to do, man. Like, just, if you, just send me a card three weeks late. I don't care. Um... But we're definitely going to move. I just don't know when. Like, but we are going to move. But also, we've talked about just, like, keeping this house and just traveling always. Um, but the thing I really want to do is I really want to, instead of getting in the car and driving 45 minutes to, to the forest, I really want to just go outside of my house and be in it. I was actually looking at, like, southern Ohio land, and I found some parcels that were, like, 60 and 90 acres like huge forested parcels of land so thinking about it move to Oregon and get goats maybe I don't think I, I've never been to Oregon actually I've been to I've been to Washington State but I've never been to Oregon it's one of those places Amanda wants to take me Yeah, I mean, it's a little out of my price range now. But I mean, seriously, this is this is no joke. 89 acres was like $300,000. Do you know how much land that is? Like that's a that's a crazy amount of land. Like I can't afford that. Um once I once I sell off this house, I'd probably have a decent down payment for it, but uh but that's a crazy amount of land, 89 acres. Like, that's enough land for me, I think. I think that would be plenty. 
What I want is I want to be able to walk out of my house, look in both directions, and not see anybody or anything. Just woods. Yeah, quick, somebody do the math on how many, how, how big that actually is. Like, if you, if you made it into a square. <laughs> I know we have smart people in here. Kesha, that sounds awesome. I want to I wanna go see tide pools. <laughs> Steve, that's, a, that's also a consideration. But also imagine in like 10 years, the technology for that is, is going to be different. Like we'll probably all have like tethered uh, drones that fly up above the, our houses that, that get Wi-Fi for us. Oh, yeah, I'll totally go there. One of these days I'll make it up to Oregon. One of these days. I got a short list of places I got to go first. Hawaii is one of them. Check. And I am bringing my fishing rod there. I want to catch a Christmas wrasse. That's what I want to catch. I'm finding a picture of one. It's not a great picture. Wow, that's not even a link. Anyway, if you copy and paste that, you can see what a Christmas wrap looks like. Yeah, I want to catch one of those guys. And look at them, and then let them go. Just to make them late for something. We actually have, um, we actually have some fish that are actually really similar, similar, similarly colored to that in Ohio, believe it or not. There are these little um, little river darters. Let's see. So 10 acres is supposed to be like three entire city blocks. So 90 would be 27 city blocks. So you're saying your own city. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, that sounds okay. Like, I'm serious that I don't want to see anybody like i want to see my neighbors i want to know them but they're gonna be like a mile away and they're probably gonna own cows <laughs> i i think here's the, here's the thing this and, and this is my this is my rationale for it i've put in my time in the city like I lived, I lived in a town that was very close to Detroit, uh, very congested. Um, I lived in the suburbs in Florida. Uh, I live in the suburbs here, but it's also it's like super crowded and congested. I've I've lived close to civilization long enough that I'm I'm, I'm kind of done. I want quiet. I don't want to just visit quiet. I want to be in quiet. I want to go see the, the, the animals that live around me every day. I don't want it to be a special occasion. I want, like, I want to live in the world as it, as it was created. <laughs> I just want to go out there and surround myself with it. Be crabby. I just want to go down to little streams and divert the flow of the stream with, with the rocks flip over stones and catch crayfish all day, every day. That's all I want to do.
But by the time I do it, I'll probably be 55. But that's okay. Also, we could have a sweet barn for a studio. I have to share it with some goats. <laughs> I have to get in my car to drive to the kids to tell them to get off my lawn. <laughs> I'll do it with a megaphone. I'll send them an email to get off my lawn. This guy's coming together. Yeah, I think, so the problem with barns, if you live in a cold climate though, is like, their ceilings are so high that heating them is a real problem. Like, you kind of have to close off areas, I would assume, because it, it would be really expensive to heat them. Um, it's almost like you just have to like, section things off. But I'd love to own a barn, like not one that's falling down. Like, not like a crazy old one. Even though they look awesome, they just present a lot of logistical problems. That's a motorcycle, if you can hear it. I think. No, it must be a truck. Why would anybody ride a motorcycle at 10 degrees? <laughs> Thermodynamic talk. See, yeah, Ethan, you know about this. Right? Doesn't it seem like it presents a, a, a logistical problem with heating a space that large with a, with a high ceiling? Most people don't think about that stuff when they go into a space. They're just like, oh, this is cool. I think it was a truck, Casho. It's parked directly outside the studio. We're getting, we're getting there on this guy. Not too much longer. Ooh, radiant floors. That's a good idea. Look at you. So that's all we gotta do is talk to the engineers. Right, I'm gonna look at this on the stream, see if I'm missing anything. Oh, it needs to be a little darker here. Sorry, I'm looking up at the, uh, the tiny screen because I can't see the image as well in real life. That's a, that's a, um, here's art talk again. Uh, whenever you see artists stand back and look at their art, at their art, they're trying to get a picture of the whole, the whole composition. Um, so it's not just a, like a dramatic thing. Like they're actually trying to get, they're, they're, they're standing back and squinting and what they're trying to do is they're trying to see the value range and um, trying to see if it's a balanced value range, which is what I keep doing. I keep looking up to see like, like is it too flat? Like like this area could be a little bit darker. It's not, it's not receding into the background enough. Um, like you, there's a lot of, we call this pushing and pulling. So uh, you're, you're adjusting the values to make things um, to make things uh, change uh, visual depth. So, good night, Steve. We'll talk to you soon. I realize I don't talk about art a lot, uh, oddly, but um, sometimes when stuff pops into my head, I feel like I should mention it. Also, again, I just take it for granted because I know what I'm doing. Like I've done this for so long that I just I I know why I'm doing it, but I feel like it might be better if I describe why I'm doing it sometimes. I'm.
I'm checking email right now. Kesho. Oh, look at those tide pools. Sweet. Those are pretty good ones, man. Yeah, those look great. Miss Nomers is now following. Thank you so much for the follow. Guys, we are getting up there. Yeah, I saw the video. It looks great. We are getting up there with followers. I think I have like 500 and almost 560 followers. So thank you very much to everybody for the follows and the subscribes and the everything. <laughs> tide pods. No, tide pools. Not Tide Pods. Don't eat them. If I have to tell you not to eat them, you are probably going to eat them anyway. Alright, I just got to fix up a couple of these lines and then we are done. Alright, I think that looks pretty good. I might fix up a couple of things afterwards. Uh, there we go, what do you think? I think it's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> tide pool pods. Uh, okay guys, I think I'm gonna wrap it up. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out, as always. Um, I don't know when we're gonna be together again. It might be next week, it might not be next week, it might be the following week. If not, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to be posting all next week. I'll probably be doing drawings on my iPad so they'll look a little different on Instagram. So uh, if you're not following me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram. Uh, you can buy stuff at the shop at Bindlewood. Um, we're having a sale on Saturday. Amanda's having uh, a sale of really beautiful artwork uh, that I'm looking at right now. Um, it's gonna be a bloodbath. There's people are gonna be fighting to get these pieces. So. Um, Go to, over to her Instagram and check it out. Check out the uh, 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 the details for that. Uh, you can support me on Patreon. And again, stay tuned for the Patreon update. I'll, I'll, I'll let everybody know. So um, thank you. I will have fun in Florida. Um, I'm looking forward to taking a couple days off and going to Disney World. And uh, I'll probably pop into the Facebook group. So uh, if you guys... Uh, oh, here. I'll just post a link to my Instagram page. Uh, here. There you go. Follow me on Instagram. Um, so, uh, yeah. Have a good weekend, everybody. And, uh, and I'll see you over on the, on the Facebook page. And, uh, uh, yeah, stay safe. Don't do drugs. Uh, stay in school. All right, everybody. Have a good one. Uh, and thank you so much for this uh, amazing kaiju day. All right, I'm going to get out of here, guys. See ya. <laughs> Bye.